professor, before you start, uh, what's going to be on the first quiz? Uh, I'm going to come like... to that. Okay, gonna... okay. Thank you. So um, let's talk about problem seven. And the problem seven reads that you have to design a minority gate for three inputs the output of such a gate becomes one if a smaller number of inputs is one than zero so number of ones should be smaller than number of zeros okay so and you have to do the truth table and the logic gate implementation using and or gates and inverters so we have three inputs Let me erase this. I want to do it a little bit better. So we have three inputs, A, B, and C, and we have an output one. A, B, and C possible values are zero, zero, zero. 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. So to find y, in other words, to write the truth table for this problem, we have to look at each row and see whether the number of ones is less than zeros. And in that case, the output is going to be equal to one. So in the first row, we have all three zeros. We don't have a one. So we have that zero is less than three. So the output is equal to one. In the second row, we have just one, one, and two zeros. So we have number of ones less than number of zeros. So the output is going to be one. Same thing here in the third row. In the fourth row, we have two ones and we have one zero. So the output has to be equal to zero. Here, the output is one. And then in all these cases, the rest, the output is equal to zero. So this is easy, okay? You probably have done that, but I have to do the truth table because I want to explain certain things on how you, we, you're going to implement the logic gate. So if I look at the true table, when A is A complement is one, B complement is one, and C complement is one, uh, I have output one. So Y, I can write it as A complement, B complement, and C complement. I have also in row two output to be one when we have A complement, B complement, and C. In the third row, 
we have plus, so each of these, if it is satisfied, we will have one. So in the third row, we have A complement B, C complement. And finally, we have the fifth row where we have plus A, B complement, C complement. So we have written Y in terms of a Boolean expression. What I need essentially for each of these product terms, I need what? What do I need to realize each of these product terms? A three input N. So a three input end gate, right? So if we have a three input end gate for the first product, we're gonna have A complement, B complement, and C complement, right? Now, this has to go to what? To an OR gate. So this is gonna be my output Y. Now, for the second term, what do I have? We have A complement. These are, by the way, A, B, and C. So we have A complement, B complement, C. So we have A, B, and C. And that has to go into the OR gate because either of one is true, the output is gonna be one, okay? And we can do the same thing for the third term. So we're gonna have a third term, or we're gonna have a fourth term, and um, we can have all these to go to this OR gate. So we can realize the circuit using inverter on N4 N gates, three input N gates, and a four input OR gate. Now, the question is, how do I realize a three input N gate and a four input OR gate? If you finish the problem at this point, it's going to be okay, but just wanna remind you, how do you realize a three input end gate? You cascade, okay? So three input and gate, we have input, I can do it in the following way. I have inputs A and B. The output here is gonna be equal to Y1. That is the input to a second end gate. And then C goes to the second end gate. And here I have Y. Yes, somebody asked me uh, whether it is allowed to do the problem in a different way. Yes, of course, there are much more optimal ways of doing this problem using much smaller number of gates. This is actually the situation in which you have to use maximum number of gates, but we still haven't gotten 
through the concept of Boolean algebra, which will allow us to reduce this function here and um, Carnot tables, a Carnot table. So when we learn about Boolean algebra, we can use basically Boolean algebra rules to simplify these expressions, Boolean expressions, or we can take the truth table and use Carnot rules to get to a condition in which we have implementation if we have a smaller number of gates. Um, even if you have larger number of gates, I mean, if the implementation works, then um, that would be okay. We just have, you have just have to double check whether your implementation works. Now, the for input or gate in terms of two input or gates can be represented here in the following way. I have inputs A and B. Here I have inputs C and D, and these go to a third or gate. So is this clear? Any questions regarding this? <clears throat> 